In this course, I'll explain basic vectors and how to get started in Illustrator, so we can move on to creating our creative elements in future. So let's get started. The first thing you should know is this tool. The Selection Tool. This is the most frequently used tool in Illustrator. This tool will be very useful, not only to select an object or content, but we can also use it to modify content or object. On the artboard, I have prepared three objects, a square, a circle, and a star. With the selection tool, you can hover the mouse over an object to highlight, and click. After clicking, then you have selected an object, and it is indicated by the appearance of a bounding box that surrounds the object. If you click on another object such as this circle, then the bounding box will appear only on this circle that has been selected. You can also select one or more objects, if you only select an object then you just click on it, and if you want to select several, then you just drag to all the objects you want to select. You can also press and hold the shift key on the keyboard and start selecting all objects one by one. If you have selected an object, and the bounding box has appeared, then you are allowed to modify the object. The basics of this selection tool are used to move objects, just click, hold and drag. Otherwise, you can use the bounding box to modify the size of an object. Click and drag on one of the widgets from this bounding box to edit sizes such as the width and the height, or with the corner to change the height and width simultaneously. Each object will be identified as an individual element that you can select, move, and edit individually. Illustrator does not fully work with layers, like Photoshop where each object is contained in one layer. In Illustrator, you can create multiple objects in one layer. Next, we move on to the second basic tool in Illustrator, and a tool that is most often used, namely the Direct Selection tool. If the Selection tool icon with a black arrow, while the Direct Selection tool you can mark it with a white arrow icon. If the selection tool functions as to select and modify objects as a whole individual element, then the direct selection tool specifically functions to select and modify the anchor points or paths of an object. So what are the anchor point and the path? To answer that question, first, we must understand what the vector is. In simple terms, the vector is a digital shape that is formed from lines, and points based on mathematical calculations, and these points are called anchor points, and the lines are called path. Furthermore, the path is divided into two types, namely, curve path and line path. Let me show you how it looks. First, activate the direct selection tool in the toolbar. And let's select one of these three objects, you can see that with this direct selection tool, we don't find the bounding box anymore. It will be more clearly visible if I select the circle or object, other than a square. Let's zoom in a bit. If this circle is selected using the direct selection tool, then you will be shown the anchor point and path of the circle. Where this circle consists of four anchor points, and also four curve paths. It's different if we select a line. A line path and a curve path only consist of two anchor points. In other words, the vector object must have these two elements, namely the anchor points and the path. Two anchor points are connected by one path, and if there is only one anchor point then a vector object will not be created. I think you can understand briefly the basic vector. And let's move on to how to use this direct selection tool. Keep in mind, that this selection tool is only used to select paths, or anchor points, not to select a complete object. If I select one of the anchor points of this circle, then we can use it to move it around. We can also use it to select more than one anchor point, like in this triangle. The selected anchor points are marked with a small blue dot, and the unselected ones are marked with a small white dot with a blue outline. And if you pay attention to the selected anchor points, then you will get a corner widget on each side of the innermost corner. This corner widget functions, to adjust the roundness of a corner. If I pull it away from the corner then the corner turns round. Let's see what happens if we apply it to this star object. Let's zoom in a little bit. This star has many corners, and each corner has a corner widget. Let's see if we select all the anchor points. Keep in mind that this corner widget will only appear on an anchor point that has a line path like this star, or square. We won't find it on a curve path like the one this circle has. If I select an anchor point in this circle, the corner widget doesn't appear, but a control handle like this. And every anchor point that has a curve path will have a control handle. So what is the function of this control handle? Its function is to control the curvature of a line. But if you can also modify the curve just by selecting and dragging directly on the curve. Like so. 
Next, we will move on to the basic shapes and free shapes in the next session of the basic vector episode.